Uh, okay, so I've been in a legit spiral this entire week. There's too much going on. We have to go. How do you go downward? Why do you micromanage my sh <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life. Long story short. been a minute since we've actually talked so let's catch up let's kiki let's hang i just woke up to a million followers on instagram what the hell i don't really care about numbers that much but this is a cool milestone i remember when i hit no i don't i don't remember when i hit a million on youtube actually i remember taking some weird photo with these balloons and being blonde and the photo being really weird but i don't remember anything else about it anyways good morning routine-ish, which has been nice to have some sort of repeating patterns and consistency, especially with our, hold on, let me go put this down. I'll be back. Also, mood. Oh, oh fuck. My tiny mic is always everywhere. If you follow me on TikTok, like be for real, because I love my tiny mic, but then I got a comment that made me want to cut my tiny mic. I think it's just fun to have it in my hand and I like the crispy audio and I don't know, I just got used to filming my TikToks a certain way that whenever I say anything or do anything, I'm like Doo -doo -doo -doo. But I read a comment and it was like, it is so millennial of you to use a tiny mic when we can hear you perfectly without it. And I was like, no offense to the millennials, but you know, like, I feel like there's a certain love that I have for being Gen Z because I barely made the cut. So that's why I rep it so hard because I'm like, you know, I'm one of y'all. <laughs> with the millennial comment, with the tiny mic, almost sent me to throw this over the balcony. But I, I like the tiny, I don't know. Let me know. Most of these nights, we'll have the Sopranos on. Henny makes a fire steak. There was like two solid years there where he would, we would get into fights because he would talk through every step of the steak. Like he loved it. It was like fun for him to like season the steak and be like, I'm seasoning the steak. I'm doing this today, I'm doing this today. And like really talk through every step. And at one point I'm like, Henny, can I just be here? Like, can I just hang out and not like be involved on every step of this steak process? Like I was starting to get annoyed. For reason being, all these years later it clicked. Oh, I feel bad, but it's cause I was getting so annoyed because he would walk me through every step and the steak would come out decent. I'm gonna sit through an hour tutorial of how to make a decent steak. <laughs> And he finally perfected his craft. And when I tell you, this man has been making the juiciest, like fat ribeyes, fat New York strips. And I'm like, okay, you got my attention. So now we hang. He talks me through his steps and it comes out fuego. It's been good. These nights at home have been good. I used to view cleaning as such a chore and now when I actually get 10 minutes to go around real quick and tidy things up, I'm so grateful for it. I'm like, yeah. Also, I look nuts at the moment. Jesus, Lord. It's probably been like three months since I've shopped for clothes for myself. And this is the first time that I went online shopping for a not pregnant stomach. I felt so brand new, like I didn't even know what to search for. I did online thrifting on Threadup. I searched things by material and I felt like such a genius for doing that. I've never done that. And you can't do that when you're thrifting in real life. I was able to just click like cashmere, I clicked wool. The first thing I needed in my closet desperately was mom bags. Like I'm a mom now, so I need to like have diapers. I need to have everything. I need to like get my shit together with purses. I got this Marc Jacobs leather bag like isn't this just gorgeous it is so now and it's a mom bag but it's like the hottest 
This is the hottest mom bag I could have whipped up for the fall. Like, let's be honest. Is this Vivian Westwood purse? Not perfect. Like, this is just the perfect color for right now. I am so excited to wear her. So this is 100% cashmere and it was not expensive and isn't this just the cutest I felt like this vest was so perfect for layering i also got these sunglasses so cool they kind of give me like chrome hearts energy i have no clue what brand these are like how perfect this is going to be styled a million different ways up and down and it's like good quality that's what thrifting should be cute how cute is this so do yourself a favor and check out ThreadUp. Shop my favorites with my link below and use my code Lauren G for an extra 40% off your order. I basically went online shopping for you. I picked a bunch of amazing things and I favorited them. Somebody that's a size eight, please get these boots. I would have gotten them, but I'm a seven and they're perfect. Like somebody that's a size eight, please run. And thank you to them for sponsoring this part of the video. They're one of my favorite sponsors that I work with. day where I was like F everything like F life like it was, that was just a negative spiral but I was having and I was like I don't even want to be in Miami. Yeah. What are we gonna be for Halloween? I thought what would be cute could be Shrek Fiona and Donkey. That is so cute. Right? Isn't that so cute? But it also it like requires a lot of painting ourselves green. You would be Shrek? No you <laughs> <laughs> That's not cute. You would be the donkey. The only thing with that costume that I don't know is like it, if we're not green, does it still hit? Or do we, like... And then it's a lot of face pain, like you just walk in the room green. Like, no, it's like face, arm. And we have no party, no anywhere to go. Like we're just No, where are we gonna go for Halloween? Like, we're just gonna stay in our living room, like, fully greened out. <laughs> what can we be for Halloween that's that typey? I heard his stomach go a little bit. He might spit up in the next 25 seconds. Maybe not. Look how he already does it. He does his little tongue. Or he's pooping. Oh, he's pooping. Huh? I smell the poop. Are you pooping? Are you pooping? It's a gorge. Okay, I wasn't even gonna talk about this, like ever, on the channel, cause like, ugh. Even talking about it annoys me, but I have time today. So this, oh, no. Looking at this is gonna throw me into a spiral. I've been spiraling all week. Ugh, should I talk about it? I'll talk about it. Ugh, okay. So I've been in a legit spiral this entire week. Henny, you want to come here? I wasn't going to talk about it, but I'm like, ugh, might as well. Oh, this is so cute. Don't wake up. It's okay. Um, our big mistake. Move it to Miami or this one? No, I wasn't going to talk about it because literally... Are you okay? Uh, Should I put him on a boot? I can, I can pop him on real quick. Also, I'm so proud of myself that I got the breastfeeding so down. Like, I remember seeing videos of girls just throw the baby on the teeth and it just works. And I was like, literally, how is that possible? But I got it. Um, when we moved into this apartment, we knew that there was concrete restoration going down on the balconies. Oh my God, honey, I can't talk about this. I'm going to go into this viral. Can you do it for me? Do it. My heart rate's going up. No, you're going to do great. No, I'm going to go into this viral. There was, it was supposed to be over. It's not over. It's going to be the whole time. Freak out. They're not So we knew that there was concrete restoration on the balconies. And we knew that there was some other stuff to it. That they're going to cover every window with this like neon blue tarp. And there's jackhammering. Now we were told that it was going to be done by the time the baby was born in September. That's what the timeline was. They are barely just... Hold on. So they're barely just getting started now. It is the, I took videos. It is the loudest noise. It is the most uncomfortable noise. And it's all the time. They don't do it on the weekends, which is the only way that I'm able to film this video right now. But we're gonna have to figure something out because at this rate, it's gonna go on for sure, for sure through the end of this year. So we's gots to go. And yeah, transparently, I've been in such a spiral 
because we are not sleeping with the newborn, obviously. So every two hours we're up at night and then we wake up at nine in the morning to jackhammering and drilling so we can't even sleep during the day. It's been a thing. And I feel like we just made such a big mistake. You talk, you talk. We had a big house. We left the big house and now we're planning to go back to the same big house, making all of this feel like a huge mistake. So yeah, there's a renter right now in the big house in Arizona until pretty much May. So we, we just don't know where to go because living life here is just tough. And it's a lot of construction. It is literally outside the balcony with jackhammers. Like, it feels crazy. And so far, I want to say out of all the walls and windows that this apartment has, they've touched like 12% of it. They still have to like wrap around the whole thing. So it's just going to be a full construction zone like... For the next year. Pretty much. We just have to like... And the newborn thing would be like one thing, right? If it was like, oh, we have a newborn. We don't sleep. We need our sleep during the day to catch up for all the sleep we miss at night. The working from home and the filming from home is like not possible. Like there, I can't do, I can't film. There's too much going on. We have to go. Because the problem is too is like we're not sleeping at night. And then during the day from 9 to 5 we can't catch up on sleep. Because at 9 it starts ripping in your ear. So even if you like barely slept, slept that night and you want to like sleep for another two hours, you're just kind of up because it's so loud. The funniest part of the whole thing is that because this is what this little man was born into, he's used to it. Like he doesn't even know that it's it bad. It doesn't really bother him that he much. He sleeps through it like nothing. Which is insane. It's so loud in here. I took videos. They won't believe me unless I put them in. Oh, oh. So yeah, I've been fucking spiraling. We have to go. Every day we fight about nothing. You just witnessed that one. Lauren has been on my ass. Like, to we're, find a solution. We're always fighting about some like stupid stuff, and no, then but... we're supp she's supposed to look at me in the face and be like, "I'm for seriously like fighting about this. This is very important to me." You don't realize. And then you've been I have to look in so... her in the face and be like, "So it's for sure not because we're sleep deprived, have a fuck." Construction in the house. We don't have a routine and everything's chaotic, but no for sure you're really fighting About this one specific thing because I said this one word wrong and then it started a fight. I don't realize how Irritable you've been I have it on video. I have it on candid camera. You're being so irritable right now. No, if I I have a little time for skincare today. I haven't done skincare in God knows how long. I mean what I'll do right before bed is slap on a thick moisturizer and call it so I just haven't had the time, but I'm making an effort to somehow get a little bit back to normal life. It's so funny because I've been s literally spiraling. I've been spiraling. I haven't made a video on it. I haven't made a video at all because I haven't been able to. But the more I think about it, I've been in such a spiral, like truly such a spiral. It's the no sleeping and this construction. Like I don't have a second to do anything. And then the weekends come and the construction's not here. And I'm like, oh, life isn't that bad, but we literally have to get out. We have to go somewhere. And I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. Shit. I don't know. I like Miami as a city, but I, we both realize that we definitely don't want to stay here. It's just a big city and it's not our vibe. We like suburbia. We like Arizona. We like driving, not a lot of cars on the road, just like peaceful mountains. Not a lot going on. That's our flow. So we know that we want to go back to Arizona at the end of this, but with the lease, would we get another place in Florida? Does it make sense? Or do we go back to Arizona, but there's somebody in our house? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to change the topic because this has literally been my mental loop for the past week. I've been just doing the same thing again and again and not getting any answers. So let's talk about skincare. <laughs> I love self-care. Ugh. Actually, I do though. I've been really pleasantly surprised too because I remember when we were making the decision to come to Miami, a lot of it was for family support. And it's been awesome being around family and not feeling alone. I mean, obviously when we lived in Arizona, it was kind of just us and it got lonely sometimes not having fam out there. But when we decided to come live in Miami, a lot of our theories was like, we're gonna need family support. And we have been so pleasantly surprised by ourselves as a team because we've been doing it like we actually haven't needed family support we've been killing it as a little duo which is just one of those things that you don't really know what it's going to be like having a kid until you're on the field obviously 
but we've been doing it. Obviously the most challenging part is the night times. Just like figuring out who's waking up when, who's taking what shifts, everybody's exhausted and that's what causes our fights when we fight. Just the exhaustion and the night, whatever. But in terms of us just like having a kid, we've been crushing it on our own. So we have this new confidence too, of like we can do it as a team. And it is super nice to be around family, but I'm thinking like long-term, just because I don't want to live in Miami long-term. I'm not a big city girl like that. I think we'll probably live in Arizona and just visit Miami frequently and have family come stay and visit us frequently. Because it's not my vibe, it's not my vibe. It's totally not my vibe. The big city, the lots of cars on the roads. I don't feel that, that safe here. And it's not that it's an unsafe city, but it's just a popping city. It's a popping place. There's a lot of movement, there's a lot going on. I miss the suburban life. And even where I live kind of now, even where I live now is pretty suburban in relativity to everything around us, like in relativity to Miami, Miami, the city that I live in is technically suburban, but ain't nothing suburban about it to me. It's a major city, it's huge, there's a ton of people. So yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life, long story short, and I would just stay here because this apartment is so gorgeous. We just decorated it perfectly, like every room really is perfect. Everything is just set up here. Like this apartment is fully, fully set up. We have all our things. We just spent so much time, effort, energy, and money to get everything situated here. But this construction is not livable, especially working from home, especially newborn. It's just not possible. It's literally gonna go to the end of this year. I have no doubt in my mind that this jackhammering will be through the end of the year. We were told basically that it would be done before he was born. They are, they've done like 12% of this apartment and he's a month old. So we got the go where? I don't know. But I promise I'm gonna stop talking about it now because I will continue to spiral, we're done. I wasn't even gonna talk about it on YouTube at all. We're done, we're done, we're done, moving on. I'll usually try and look semi-cute in the mornings and I end up regretting it because I'll get thrown up on. Oh my God, you know what? I saw this tick, or I made this TikTok about how I haven't been wanting to leave my house whatever, like with a newborn, but I made a TikTok about it and somebody commented like, hey girly, I know you don't want to leave your house, but what about his appointments? Like his doctor's appointments, like obviously I'm taking him to every single one of his doctor's appointments, like what? Um, but the last time I wore this sweater was to his doctor's appointment and he pooped on it. Aww. This is my favorite outfit of his. I can't stop putting him in a henny, definitely doesn't love it as much as I do. But like every time I go to dress him, I always gravitate towards this. These are the best. If there's any moms or expected moms out there, these are the best. Anything with a onesie that you can unzip from the top or unzip for the, from the bottom for a quick diaper change. It's time to change your diaper. Oh, I love the painted clouds in this room because I'll always see him looking up at it. And it makes me so happy. Yeah, you like that? You like the clouds? Oh my God. Henny, come here, you won't believe this one. And I changed this at like 5 a.m. Whoa. It's not that much poop. What? You put this in the trash right there? And then let's throw that out. He has been so much more awake and conscious. I know. I think it's that like one and a half month flow. Look at him. Look at him smiling. He's like growing up. Oh, and mommy's so gentle. Mommy's the best at it. I really want to pick his booger right here. That's a moment. lot of poop, my baby. What the hell? Why are you pooping so much? You gotta hit him with a fresh new wipe. I'll start changing more, the diaper more in the middle of the night as well. I've usually assumed like that you wake up first and that he he has one. You got a little funkiness on your fingers. Oh no, my whole shit's fucked up. You're such a good boy, Rio. You're not even crying. Coterie goes crazy. It's like the the way that they market themselves is they're the Rolls Royce of diapers, but like low key. Yeah. Is that how they market themselves? Yeah, that's I follow them on Instagram. They're like that's what they said, but it's kind of true. Where do you go downward? Why do you micromanage my shit? <laughs> Is it not supposed to? Because it's what I do. Because <laughs> it's what I do. This room smells rank. <laughs> Met your belly. Look at this big old belly. Say thanks, Dad. You're doing this again? Wait, that's dirty. 
No. I'm that was used. Let's get another one. We just used this you one. You don't like the mommy one. But no, we just used this one. Literally. It seems going to feel dirty. And there's been something blue. It's recently. brand new. I just got it folded from there. Dude, there's not another one right there? You just don't like that it says mommy. No. We just wore this the whole day. It like, was... It's, it's going to feel <laughs> dirty. Oh, mm -hmm. now he's pissed. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh you're still a new one. I really love living this close to my sister. That is one thing that hits about Miami so hard is I have my sister, we are together. Like if I'm ever hanging out with someone, it's my sister and she rocks, she's so cute. Like I just got off the phone with her. She's like, girl, I love you, but you gotta start taking care of yourself. Like we're trying to set goals. So we're talking about how we're gonna start oiling our hair and like do a little skincare and like silly little goals like that. Like I really genuinely love having her so close by. I'm gonna, I've been low key trying to, Get her to move to Scottsdale. <laughs> I'm like, please, she's 20. She's about to be 21. Let me know if you have an idea. Sure. Her vibe is very chill, very relaxed, low maintenance, but like just good vibes. And she's about to turn 21. And I'm trying to think of like something cute we could do. She doesn't like anything like over the top. She's very chill, very relaxed. And she's turning 21. I'm trying to think of something cute we could do with her for her birthday. Um, but anyways, I just got off the phone with her and she was telling me, apparently if you like oil your scalp with a bamboo brush, with this oil, whatever, you can stimulate growth and do a little skincare, whatever, da, da, da. I've been so just like not taking care of myself literally at all. I do think people are worried about me in my immediate circle, but like, it'd be like that. What can you do? I am gonna work out right now, which is why I've been standing here in sunglasses for the past Three minutes, I'm gonna work out. And he has this shirt and he never wears this, so I'm gonna crop her. She's cute. I feel like it's weird to work out with sparkling water, but I cannot be stopped. This is my guiltiest, guiltiest pleasure. Doing 12, 3, 30 has been very nice for the mental. It's probably the one thing I'm doing for myself consistently right now. So it just feels good to get out of the house for 30 minutes and do one healthy thing. It's so cool that we're gonna have all these videos like shot on a good camera to have like forever. Oh yeah, she's a baby. He's only a baby. Do you like my mommy manicure? Honestly, it's kind of giving. I always have the worst luck with nail salons, like for whatever reason. I never get fully slayed, like even though these are cute, like the line is literally all over the place. I just don't, I'm not the type of person to sit there and get my nails done and be like, can you fix? Cause I'm always listening to a pop. I'm just in my own world. So I'm not like the one that's gonna like micromanage the job. If it comes out tough, I just go home and I'm like, oh sh whatever. Tough luck, but I do love the mommy little manicure. Having a newborn is not, you can't get acrylics for so many different reasons. And I've been liking the natural flow. Somebody DM'd me and was like, these are the nails you get when you ask your mom, like, mom, am I old enough to get a manicure? And she's like, these are like the training, training wheel manicure, like the first one you're allowed to get when you're like six. It's cute. Shop my favorites with my link below and use my code Lauren G for an extra 40% off your order. I basically went online shopping for you. I picked a bunch of amazing things and I favorited them. Mm -hmm.